Welcome back to the Krabby Club Podcast. My name is Randy Victory, and today we're going to be talking about a Netflix short, um, a Netflix uh, film, I would guess, a uh, Netflix original. It's has it's something from Japan, and it has three short films in it. Uh, I forgot what the first two were named, um, mostly because um, I wasn't really. <laughs> It's already been a while, a few days since I watched it, and I really liked the last one. It was called Invisible, and I loved it. Uh, it they're short films created by, um, if I recall, let me let me uh, pick it up. So I might be giving away some spoilers. Uh, so I recommend if you guys go check it out yourselves because it's actually really good and. I gotta say, if you don't watch it, you're gonna be missing out. Modest Heroes. Here it is. So, uh, this is the short summary they have. It's a 35 minute film, uh, short film, and Ponoko Short Film theory, uh, Theater. And I really enjoyed all of them. It, they were all beautifully done and beautifully amazing. It, it was just enjoyable. It uh, the so it says it's two underwater siblings surviving on their own, a boy that's that has a serious egg allergy and an invisible and a man invisible to the rest of society. Three short animated tales, and oh, baby, it was touching. Um, the first one, it was like Thumbelina. Uh, they were. Humans, but they were small. They were able to breathe underwater, but as well as breathe above air. And they, their whole uh, living arrangement was underwater. They were hunters and gatherers. Uh, now, this one isn't dubbed. Um, I don't know if it's different in the Japanese one, but th they have their own language in that short film, in the first one. And... Uh, it, it's not like difficult like if they're trying to explain a lot of difficult things no that you're it's even with their their language they're speaking in the short film you're still capable of telling what they're trying to express by the way they animate the way they move the way their mo their face um, uh, the way of their face expressions and it was really really nice i enjoyed the whole story it, it was i'm trying to not give out too much information just so you guys go check it out and i'm telling you if you have 53 minutes in your day uh, just an hour even less than an hour sit down and watch it with your younger sibling your family you're all gonna enjoy the short small films in this short theater a production and it, it's beautifully animated i enjoyed all of it uh, i think it was by the people that also made um uh the mary in the witch flower i'm not i'm not exactly percent sure but i saw something in the trailer and it, it's like ghibli style i can agree to that it's ghibli style but it's beautifully animated the second one with the kid with allergies yeah like everyone at least knows or knows someone that had or someone that know knew someone else that had allergies i personally don't have anything like that i will need an allergy shot for um i'm just like dust and that kind of stuff uh, makes me sneeze a lot. It's not, it's not like something like drastic. I need to go to the hospital kind of stuff. Uh, nothing like that. It's just like too much dust makes me sneeze like crazy, and too much pollen makes my no nose clog up. But I'm just capable of breathing after all. Just because you can't breathe through your nose doesn't mean you can't breathe through your mouth. Of course, if you're sleeping, that could become an issue. But <laughs> um, it was. Well, unlike the other one where there were hunters and gatherers and based in this, I not, you couldn't 
tell what kind of society they lived in or what we were living in. You just know they lived in, in a stream, in a forest with all these creatures. In this one, it's modern day uh, Japan and his parent, his dad, it, we don't really get to see him that much. But he's there, he, he loves his child, it's just most Japanese males are usually working. He's an office worker from the way he's dressed. His mother is a dancer. And the dancing sequence they had was amazing. I was... I was, I was just blown away from the animation they were having. And I love the way they treated the uh, a final scene in the, in the film. And... If you see it, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. It's the very last scene before it ends. And it was beautifully made. And the way it was treated and seen. Um, like the way he sees it was pretty amazing. Because it, the way the animator is shown in the film isn't the way it actually happens in real life. But, I mean, I mean, not in the whole... If you see it, you know what I'm meaning. You know, he's the few extravagant things happen that don't happen. But and you still get all those dots, the lumps and all like that. But it was, it, it seemed like the way the child was seeing it. Like how allergies happen to him, you know. Like, and it was beautifully done. Like, uh... The mother and son dynamic was done amazingly. I loved every single part of it. I also loved the the first one with the uh, the father and daughter and son dynamic. The way everything's done that they want to protect, and then the mother wasn't there for a lot, but um, it was the whole family dynamic they had was amazing. In this one. It was also great, and all the characters were enjoyable, fun, and very um, joyful. And, I mean, not all the time, but they were joyful and amazing. Uh, it also 10 out of 10. First one, 10 out of 10. And the last one, Invisible. I loved it. I also loved it because I know how that feels. Um, like, just go... Like, it happened during high school. It just... It seemed like every single day, I like I wasn't craving attention or anything like that. I never was seeking attention, anything like that. If something came up, like something stupid, I'll probably just say something sarcastic or something just out, out there. But that's usually how I am. Like if someone does something, I'll usually say something sarcastic or it depends on the situation. But being technically an outcast being like I love anime I love video games being a nerd being an otaku being that kind of stuff you're we're technically invisible to everyone else and yeah it seemed like that during high school it always seems like that to most people that like that kind of stuff I enjoyed Pokemon I enjoyed Yu-Gi-Oh I enjoyed everything I I I, I didn't grow up and when you and there's other reasons for that but in this one you see how it goes uh, how a person enjoying his normal life sees himself when no one pays attention to him uh, when he's just an outcast a tenic, just invisible to the rest and he literally is invisible he's so invisible that he has no way he feels like if he doesn't so have something to keep him down keep him down to earth he will just float up to the sky and just be invisible and just disappear like if no one knew of his existence and I love the little thing that happened near the end um now there's three things one of them I'm gonna say which one it is the other two you gotta see the film to see it and also 10 out of 10 uh first one when they introduced that character the way the world treats him the way everything interacts with him even when he does something to help he's not even acknowledged like he's completely out there like people just seem like oh if he were to lift up a pen uh 
like in one scene, he lift up a pen uh, for a worker, and she didn't even react. Like if he, it was just like ooh magic, like it just lifted itself. Like if there was no one there, not even acknowledgement. I actually thought in a moment hey, that was gonna be the whole uh, like whole dynamic. She sees him, uh, they fall in love. But I was like, when it didn't happen, I was like. I like the way this is going. It's already surprising me. It didn't go with the normal anime trope. That that some animes use that trope, not very often, but some of them do. It's usually the otaku character becoming the harem protagonist or something like that. And oh, next uh, the first scene was one of the scenes they introduce a character. And and they leave it up to your imagination, like what he tries, what it means, uh, because we don't actually get to see his face, so we don't know if he's actually visible like everyone else, or he's invisible like him. Like you know, I know how it feels. Now they have a little conversation. I'm not gonna say it. I know what truly happens, but I'm gonna leave it to you guys to go watch it. And then there's one other scene at the very ending. I love it. I, I, I love it. Especially the final sequence. If I say what it is, it's going to ruin it. Uh, so I'm not going to say what happens. Uh, let's just say it makes it, it makes him happy. And I personally thought it was amazingly beautifully done as well. All three films were amazing. Uh, amazing. And beautifully animated, and I give them props. So you should go check it. Go check it out. So the very final one, right after even the credits, it's a little sequence of him going to work like normal on his moped and stuff. But you see him invisible. But the further he gets away, and right right before the camera turns to black. You see the invisible turning visible, and you see his hair. You don't get to see his face, but you see him become invisible. Like if he's, um, what was I gonna say? Like if he's accepting himself, and he's he's gonna change. You know, he's gonna stand out, not stand out, but you know, he he accepted it, and he's ready to move on. And ready to, uh, ready to take the world in a brand new, brand new light, and I love it. I love it. Uh, go check it out. I, I like. I can't like tell if this was. I don't know if it's in DVD or Blu-ray or anything like that, but I can't say any more than just go check it out. It, the Modest Heroes is amazing, beautifully animated, and. Pon, uh, Ponico, or I'm sorry how you pronounce it, but it's it's just a 10 out of 10 short films. Um, I have seen a lot of short films, but done like this, not really. Most of the ones I see are either crude, like not because I, I'm looking up crude. It's just they show up like, oh, it's like 10 out of 10, all this. Like one other one, it's a short um, music video, kind of animation, and I, I enjoyed it as well. Um, it reminds me of the final film, uh, uh, kind of, a little bit. Um, it's um, Birds by Imagine Dragons, the animated music video, and it's beautifully done as well. I love, but I'm more like during the music video, they're like making out, uh, like laughing. At the girl because she has wings. I'm more like, are you guys like I don't know like losing some brain cells or something, smoking way too much? Like what are you stupid? You don't make fun of a kid who has wings. That's like every kid's uh, a dream right there, wanting to fly. Like this person, this girl gets to fly, and you're making fun of her. I'd be like, mm -mm, you're not gonna make fun of her. Like. That's just amazing. So yeah, um, this is all I had. I know I didn't really review it because I want people to truly go and check it out themselves. Uh, they'll have a good experience and one hour is not gonna kill you. So yeah, 
Go check it out, have a nice time, and let me know what you think. That is all for now. Thank you all for listening to the Crabby Club Podcast. Make sure to follow. And yeah, I mean, everything else is down below in the links and stuff. Uh, That's it. So thank you all for listening. And until next time.